Thank you. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the weekly TST call. As about everybody knows, I think, uh, this is a public meeting. Everybody is welcome to join and contribute. There are two requirements to doing so, though. The first one is to be aware and live by the antitrust policy, the notice of which is currently displayed on your screen. And the other piece is the code of conduct, which is linked from the agenda as well. And we basically ask you to behave. All right, with that taken care of, we can go ahead and start with the announcements. We have a whole bunch of them, but for the most part, these are just reminders. There's the weekly developer newsletter. Please do think about what's going on in your project and uh, think about whether there's anything that you could highlight and contribute to the newsletter. Um, we have the global forum going on. I mean, the registration is still ongoing. It's coming up, it's heating up. There are new announcements of new speakers and keynotes going on. I do recommend that you uh, register if you haven't done so yet and, uh, and socialize it within your networks so that everybody is aware. Helen, you want to talk about the white paper greenhouse update? Yeah, I just wanted to remind everybody that um, this task force, which is still open to new members, so please feel free to join us um, if you haven't joined us in previous meetings. That doesn't preclude you from uh, joining us in future meetings, but that will be on Friday uh, tomorrow at 10 a.m. Eastern. Um, there's the wiki there, and uh, we have lots of interesting things to talk about, and it seems that this task force is... Um, charged with uh, a, a numerous projects. So we'd absolutely love uh, kind of more hands on deck there um, and we're making good progress. So please join us. All right. Thank you. And as I mentioned last week, there is quite a bit of interest in uh, blockchain interoperability and new work. I mean, there's a discussion that has been moved now to the architecture working group, which has kind of woken up for the occasion. And so there's actually a email thread now going on and anybody, and I suspect at some point we'll probably have some calls. And so there are actually no fewer than basically three different approaches uh, being you know, considered within Hyperledger alone. And so we're trying to focus for now on understanding the ins and outs of each approach, how they compare they all seem to address the same use cases, but in different ways. So the primary goal is to understand how the different approaches compare and or not. So again, if you have any interest in this, subscribe to the Architecture Working Group mailing list because this is where it's happening for now. And then likewise, there is a renewed effort to relaunch the Performance and Scale Working Group. Uh, I think there's actually a call being scheduled now. I meant to change the link, but anyway, if you follow the link, um, there's discussion on what they are going to do. And uh, again, if you have interest in this, I encourage you to follow the link and uh, consider joining. Is there any other announcements anyone, anyone wants to make? Okay, still not. Um, all right, when it comes to quarterly reports, um, so Explorer and Indie have, have been around. They were already submitted the week before. I just put them, carried them over in case anybody had any questions. I didn't see anything on the wiki. The new report we received is from Iroha. I don't know if there's any questions. I actually asked a question because they put, and I didn't think I got any answers. Do we have anybody from the Aroha team on the call? Yep. So do you know? Because so I think it's Sarah submitted the report and she talked about how 
there were some issues with DCO issues that had not been caught up that uh, have now been surfaced in the process of moving from master branch to main branch, I assume. Yeah, indeed, we, we had several problems there. Like, uh, yeah, we have a, in main, uh, everything uh, looks okay, but yeah, we have a dev branch and uh, uh, well, we had to force push it uh, several times in order to fix DCOs and see, and still it's, uh, um, yeah, it's kind of painful to do it every time as we have several pull requests opened and uh, whenever we force push, uh, yeah, the guys need to again to rebase or take the latest version of uh, dev branch uh, but yeah whenever we think we fixed everything uh related to this you like fix the messages in commits uh then yeah we figure out that well that uh, another commits remain that we still need to fix this all um however uh it's kind of not obvious uh, what exactly commits we need to fix because there is a message in github uh, that suggests like uh, which commits have broken DCOs, we fix them, but then it finds uh, another commit. So yeah, that thing becomes a little bit pro problematic there. So I see that Sarah actually responded to my question on the wiki page at the end there. I see this a few hours ago. And I have to admit, I don't understand the issue with the way she presented. She's expected Kulvadini something at ukr.net, but we got even Kulvadini K star star at Soramitsu. What's the issue there? Yeah, the issue is there is not clear how um, the DCO bot decide what is expected as a as an email uh, there. So... I think it's the get author. I, I have to go and absolutely look at the code, but I'm pretty sure if you if you look at the author of the commit. That that's the one that it expects to sign off from. Uh -huh. And there is a tool that we have that uh, John Murdoch wrote, and uh, I don't have it at hand. I'll send something to the TSC mailing list uh, that does make this a little bit easier um, in terms of finding out exactly which commits are broken. So, yes, I think we used that tool, and uh, well, it also. I don't know. Probably the issue. Problem. Probably the issue is somewhere in DCO board because uh, the, I think we used that tool and it uh, actually showed some commits that actually were uh, well committed uh, like several years ago. Uh, but uh, uh, well, before we actually used that tool, we didn't even know that such commit exists because DCO board uh, didn't show any any error there. Um, probably that also because uh, that commit several years ago was. Uh, from the Panda bot, um, so maybe it didn't, I don't know, maybe it doesn't use properly for for the bots. Uh, but anyway, yes, that thing really uh, becomes a little bit annoying uh, and uh, uh, a little bit slows down development as, uh, yeah, we need to constantly like checking. Well, we see that uh, DCO is not passing, then we need to force push the dev branch, then we need to again rebase our existing pull requests. Yeah, that thing, yeah, bits. Not very nice for us. Well, the DCO check is an ongoing issue. We have an, an open issue on that very subject, actually, or two. So, I don't know. I mean, can we follow up with on this, Rai, and try to understand if there's anything that can be done to ease the pain? Sure, I'll take it up offline. All right, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Camille. All right, so we are missing, we, just so you know, I mean, we're still missing a report from uh, Aries, but. I suspect they just have not realized. And uh, well, so if anybody is in touch, please let them know. Somebody like Nathan maybe can ping them. All right. But I think that, that's all. Any other questions on any of the reports or Euroha in particular, which is the new one? 
Okay, hearing none, I assume we're good to go. All right, so let's move on to the main uh, part of the agenda for today then. So as you must have seen, we uh, have received, we have received uh, from the Calido uh, company a proposal to launch a new hyperledger project called Firefly, which is based on some work they have been doing for quite a few years. And um, so I said, well, we don't really have anything pressing on the, to put on the agenda. So I invited them to present to us today. I don't expect us to make a decision yet to answer you know, Tracy's point. I mean, that would be rushing for sure. But uh, I figured we could give them some time to present the, the proposal, explain a little bit what this is about. And uh, hopefully, you know, people will get a better understanding of what the this project is about, and have a chance to ask questions, and then we can let that sit, uh, you know, uh, uh, for a week or two, and then look at it again, make a decision based on the, you know, we'll see. I mean, if people have more questions, they can be asked off offline as well in between. So. With that said, I'm going to turn to the Kaleido team. We have several people. I don't know, Jim, Steve, who is going to take the lead? Who hey, one of you wants to present? Our CEO. And uh, do Steve, you guys have slides you would like to present? Or do we go yeah. with uh, Steve, Steve will present. Okay. Thanks, Arnaud. And we've got. Uh, some a, a number of the the Clado team is on as uh, guests this morning, so thank you for letting us come and, and walk you through Firefly. Uh, I'm going to um, I, the guidance I received was to spend about 20 minutes on on this walkthrough and then leave plenty of time for discussion and Q and A. So uh, please hold me to that. I, I'll I'll step through it. Um, I created this exact summary just to, to make a, a few key points and, and then I'll step through the story very quickly. Um, but Firefly, you know, we see as a larger system around a blockchain and I'll describe that in, in, in greater detail uh, going forward. So it's not a new blockchain protocol. It's not, um, you know, replacing a blockchain protocol. It's not, and interop project, Arnaud, you were talking about those uh, a few minutes ago. We see it as, as being very complementary to all of those things. Uh, it's, a, it's a larger sort of coordination system. Um, and the idea is to take the plumbing out of building an enterprise blockchain. Uh, so there are a mix of technologies in a very pluggable by design um, art system architecture. And uh, we really feel like Hyperledger is the right place for, for Firefly to be. It, it's a large, fairly ambitious uh, project. Um, it's really aimed squarely at the enterprise blockchain community and space. It complements many existing Hyperledger projects. And in fact, you know, Fabric, Beisu, uh from day one will, will be you know, supported as as the underlying uh, blockchain runtime that, that's used by by Firefly nodes. Things like interop, et cetera, will also, you know, very logically and easily map into uh, Firefly as well. And, and we see keys to success of, of really building properly uh, through an open governance structure, gaining broad participation. Um, allowing the market to drive the evolution of Firefly. We recognize there are many promising emerging technologies and, and we think of Firefly as sort of a larger uh, system, a coordination system, you know, allowing the market and the community to drive that and contribute to that are, are going to be keys to its success going forward. As Arno alluded to, we're not starting from scratch here. You know, the, the seed contribution uh, will be mostly uh, private code from Kaleido, but it does represent several years of active engineering. There's production code. There are very large companies, uh, some of whom are Hyperledger members are, are running on this, relying on this code. 
Um, and, and we ourselves are the founders of Kaleido, our XIBM. Some of you know that, some of you may not. Um, and we've been in the blockchain space uh, for six years now, hard to believe, uh, and, and are really sort of core system back office folks, uh, experienced and contributing to enterprise open source and, and so on. So there's a quick snapshot. I'll, I'll sort of end on the timeline, but just jump into the story. Um, I think the bottom line is we, what we see is it's just way too hard still to build out an enterprise blockchain use case. And uh, I'll give you a, a simple narrative for that. You know, what we see over and over again, like the Groundhog Day movie is enterprises think the job when they start out on, on building an enterprise blockchain use case is, hey, I'll, I'll sort of write some smart contracts or chain code, and then I'll start up a node, maybe build a simple web app and, and that'll be it. Um, but what we see is they quickly get sucked into a lot of plumbing work and, and a lot of it's off-chain plumbing. There are a set of components like messaging, like document exchange and other things um, that we see almost every enterprise blockchain project needs. And so as a side effect of trying to build a use case, you find out that you're a plumber and, and it can really spiral. You know, we I think we're all familiar with projects that have just gone on into years and they're not even live yet. Um, and it doesn't have to be that way. Um, you know, the, the, the plumbing can, can be uh, taken out of the equation and, and we really think that's gonna be a huge win for the market. To, to put that in di diagram format, um, you know, this is a, should be a somewhat familiar picture to all of us in an enterprise blockchain network. It doesn't make sense to just decentralize at the blockchain layer. What, what organizations do is, you know, you're, you're really decentralized up the whole stack. So every member is running their own copy of the full application stack. And, and there are common layers that we know about from other, you know, generations of of enterprise IT, things like workflow and middleware and you know, different data, data systems, data components and so on. And so some of, some of this stack needs to connect privately to your own back office. Some of it needs to be network facing. Um, and you know, there's things like tokens and digital assets and you know, the immutable ledger, which we know about, but there's also private data exchange and off data, off chain data flows. And, and often there's broadcast data that you want delivered to all, all members. And all that sort of needs to work together critically, crucially, you know, these, these flows all need to work together end to end. When you zoom in on these sorts of layers, you can see, as I was saying, and that prior slide, dozens of components. Um, and I, I won't get in those today, but if I sort of overlay this, you know, I'm overgeneralizing here, right? But the idea that there's lots of open source activity, you know, down towards the bottom of this stack. But as of yet, as to, to our knowledge, there really isn't a, an open source project that comprehensively tries to tie together some of these other layers in, in the stack and, and help, uh, help companies to rationalize that. A quick example. You know, we think a lot about the, the, the evolution from Docker to Kubernetes. If you think about Docker, the promise that it had was that all software could fit into the same box. And this was really powerful, right? Really cool. Think hard things like networking and security and you know, scalability and failover to solve those sorts of problems once and to apply it to all your software systems is a, was a huge breakthrough. And it worked great on a, on a developer's laptop, right? But how, a, how could an enterprise go into production on that without something like a control plane? And how could you manage, you know, not one, two, three, but 10, 20, 100, 300, 1,000 Docker containers, right? You needed a larger system and, and, and companies also needed, you know, plugins for some of these other functional pieces um, around, inside, alongside, underneath of Docker. And that's what Kubernetes brought, we know. And interestingly, Kubernetes sort of helped us realize the initial promise of Docker, right? That, that all so the power of all software fitting into the same box. 
And so in the same vein, we feel like in the enterprise blockchain space, there's this huge promise and it makes sense and we get it, you know, the coordination of a shared ledger and staying in sync and automating around smart contracts, our business logic, it's, it's really powerful, but in the same vein, companies just really struggle to, to deploy that, to, to get into production. And, and so Firefly we see as that sort of Kubernetes, that larger system, taking some of the design principles like being very pluggable and extensible, we think is, is really appropriate in this space. Um, we are using the term multi-party system. I know some folks are, have heard that or familiar with it. it it's you know, sort of something else that's complementary and additive to a blockchain protocol. And you know, as I said before, we could see a number of Hyperledger projects, you know, present and emerging and, and future that could really fit in and, and complement to, to what Firefly is trying to do to get, get enterprises out of plumbing, right? The plumbing bits are solved. You get a really nice, simple programming model uh, to build to, um, you know, these components are fit together. Uh, they work together end to end and things like network management that really needs to span across on chain and off chain there there are you know new tools uh, to, to help with that as well and i know you know the goal wasn't really to get into the technical detail we're happy to do that a bit in the q a and 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 also offline and, and follow-ups and, and and follow on discussions um, but just to give you a sense you know of these layers the core is really the brain that sits alongside your application and gives you those really simple, clean um, APIs to, to work against. Uh, and then we have sort of a, a loose coupling philosophy where connectors can be plugged in and utilities like, um, you know, blockchain protocols themselves can, can all run. Um, and, and the idea is, as, as a real quick aside, that Again, these, these are very pluggable. You know, anyone could pick up and, and build, um, you know, an, an agent or a connector. Uh, and with just implementing a thin shim can, can uh, plug that in, into Firefly. We're not even opinionated on things like transport. Uh, uh, and so just a couple more points and then we'll transition to, to the discussion. We mentioned pluggable. Well, that includes the blockchain protocol itself. Um, you know, day day one principle. We want to we want to be multi protocol uh, it, within the Firefly node. You know, starting up. You know, one one of these protocols. There's a, a lot of IP that's being contributed around this to to make this possible. You know, when I said Clado's years into this. Um, you know, it's, as you guys know, these these protocols are quite different. Uh, and, and we can go into great detail on, on uh, how we're doing this. I, I will note that we have clients that are running across all of these protocols today on fundamentally the Firefly stack. You know, really leveraging blockchain for it, what it's great at, things that we know sound boring but are really important, like global ordering and, and finality, um, and, that, and then building upon some of those, you know, data immutability. Um, techniques like hash pinning, um, you know, tokens, et cetera, all of that goodness from the blockchain being there, but building on that to further simplify and also to, you know, um, unify off-chain and on-chain uh, aspects. Uh, and so that's what Firefly is doing. Do you want to, you know, just double emphasize um, the importance of the Hyperledger community being really enterprise ready, enterprise friendly, open source, um, clean licenses, open governance, very pluggable, uh, op open for contributions, uh, steering, et cetera, and absolutely enterprise grade, uh, ready for production. There is a UI uh, that, that comes with this, just to give you guys a snapshot of, of that as it's emerging. And finally, just a, a little bit of detail on um, you know, the, uh, the evolution within Kaleido, we started building, you know, these capabilities as what we thought of as individual plug and play services that, that a customer could kind of take and compose together to build their application. As we built 
you know, as we ourselves helped our customers to build their solutions, we really saw the same services used in the same combinations and the same patterns, regardless of the industry. And out of that emerged, you know, the first version of what I'll call the brain, you know, that core that, that really helps and simplifies the orchestration of all of that. We had called that Clido Asset Trail. Uh, and again, that, that was built as a closed source, you know, proprietary thing. And now we're really excited to propose the next evolution of that which is to um, you know, take this opportunity to really refactor it, um, to um, you know, evolve it into a top grade enterprise you know, system where, where we think the space really goes, is going and, and what it needs um, to, to really design, take, take a fresh opportunity to design from the, the top down things like that you'd expect out of an open source project, like that there's a, a nice five to 10 minute quick start download runs on your laptop, get going, you know, quickly, but there's also a path there for, for a robust uh, enterprise deployment. Um, and there's a little bit of detail around that. And, and so that's, we're, we're sort of right at, at this point and excited to, to make the jump. Quickly on the timeline, this is our proposal. You know, it's all, of course open to everyone's input here and, and feedback, but we're here at the early part of May and, and with, with the proposal in hand, I know we've been discussing this with a few folks in and around the community for quite a while. Um, the code is available and ready for review. We'd like your input on how best to, to get, you know, all the folks that want to, to look at that. Um, very much appreciate all the feedback that's been pouring in over the last couple of days on the proposal itself and, and look forward to continuing that. If we're in a place for it, we'd, we'd, we'd really like to aim for a vote from the TSC at, by the end of the month. Uh, and in particular, just because the Hyperledger Global Forum's around the corner and, and getting the word out uh, on, on this community it would be a great opportunity to do that. Uh, as you guys know, that's June 8th to 10th. And then we're planning some sort of intensive uh, activities and workshops the day after the event on, on the 11th. And, and we're, we're working with uh, Brian and Daniela to um, you know, plan for, for how to socialize that. So I promised 20 minutes. I think I'm pretty close. Uh, and, and I'll uh, stop there and, and open it up for uh, questions and comments. Yeah, I didn't mean to rush you that much. You actually took only 15 minutes. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> if there's anything else- I had you that want extra to cup add, of coffee this morning, it. I guess. <laughs> That's all right. One comment. I mean, I saw some of your slides were with the tag uh, Kaleido Confidential. This is a public meeting with a public record. So those are no longer confidential if they were ever meant to be, you know, <laughs> just so you know. I, I assume it's just the leftover, but uh, yeah, yeah, it is. I appreciate that. We'll get that cleaned up. And there are people who actually uh, have asked, hot asked on. Uh, we have a chat on uh, on Rocket Chat we use, and uh, hot asks if the slides would be made public. Can you make this deck available? Yes, yes, we're happy to do that. And if you give us advice on how best to do that. All right. It's, it, they are sitting in the, a Hyperledger um, shared drive on, on Google Drive. And so we can certainly add everyone on the TSC. But if there's some other wiki or some place to put these, we're happy to do that as well. Yeah, yeah I would just, can, uh, I, I would ask you to uh, attach them, you know, export it as a PDF and attach it to the meeting record for this meeting, which, you know, just edit it and drop it in there. Sure. Sounds good. Yeah. All right. I had one question to get us started. Uh, I'll, I'll abuse my privilege as chair to ask the first question on the technical level. So in a sense, you actually end up with two different networks, right? There's the Firefly network with the Firefly nodes talking to one another, which basically relies on a different network, which is really the blockchain network, the Fabric, Corda, or some Ethereum network to 
to, as you say, pin some of the transactions and data to that. Is that correct? I wonder, maybe I could take that one. This is Peter Broadhurst here. Um, uh, the, the reality that we see from production blockchain deployments today, like um, not just the ones that we're involved in, but you just look at the space, is that um, it's almost universal that there are multiple connectivity networks going on. That the, the blockchain is one way, one way that the members are talking to each other, but almost certainly there's other pipes. There's um, things like IPFS um, or some other way of broadcasting data. There's things like um, messaging pipes, managed file transfer. Um, you know, maybe it's maybe it's an AMQP provider like RabbitMQ or or, or, or another. And um, Firefly doesn't propose changing that status quo. That is the status quo. Um, but it does propose making the life of the developer living with that reality radically simpler. Instead of that developer having to become an expert in messaging and an expert in Fabric or Ethereum or Corda and an expert in, um, uh, in all of the complexities that come with this sort of multi-party system design that's so different to what they do for web and mobile development um, to date. But what they get is, as a developer, is a unified API with things that make sense to them, things that are easy to understand if you're used to using all of the other APIs that, that you're used to using. You're used to use, using you know, infrastructure services and, and the like. Think of the difference between in a database. Today, what most people are asked to do for blockchain is like writing stored procedures in the database. You, you have to understand how it works internally. You have to really become very involved. Um, but that's not the way any web, modern web developer develops against the database today. They just use SQL or something even simpler than SQL on top of that, or even a no, no SQL interface that's just designed and built for them to get their job done and not worry about what's happening inside of the plumbing. And that's what Firefly intends to do. So yes, the Firefly, the Firefly nodes, like any enterprise application in the blockchain space, are connected together through the network. And yes, the network includes blockchain communications as well as non-blockchain communications. All Firefly has done is made that building the actual business API and the business UI much, much simpler by unifying them under, um, under a common API and then encoding the patterns that are really common. And we started with some patterns that we just see day in, day out in production projects, like transferring your data off chain and pinning it, like coordinating really complicated business flows that you couldn't co coordinate before using blockchain to sequence the steps that different parties are taking, like NFTs and tokens. Um, so, so those patterns can just become you know, API constructs, like you'd expect and you know, create, retrieve, update, and delete for a database. Well, what are those constructs for, for blockchain? Um, it's trying to actually encapsulate those and make them easier to understand as a developer. All right, thank you. Um, I, I also wanted to make one observation I meant to actually say before is that you guys refer to multi-party system, which interestingly enough has been a point of discussion in Hyperledger, where in a recent uh, member summit, you know, there was a recommendation from the members that maybe the charter of Hyperledger should be extended if needed, because when we looked at it, it wasn't even clear that we actually need to do an extension, but you know, maybe make it clearer that it could be extended to multi-body uh, systems beyond maybe the pure, what might some people might think of a pure blockchain. So I just wanted to say that it's, you know, it's not a foreign concept to this crowd. It shouldn't be at least. So, with that said, um, maybe we can echo one more thing and before I turn to the rest of the TSC, you know, 
one of Tracy's questions, or I should say a series of questions, she seemed to be keen on and better understanding, you know, what exactly you guys were planning to contribute, which I think is, you know, is in part at least um, motivated by the fact that we understand that this comes from closed source. It's basically your assets that you guys are built a business on top of. And the question is, how much are you going to contribute? Am I going to have a system that I can really use? Um, Steve, shall I start on that one? Yeah, please, Peter. So, so um, yes, a system that you can you can use, a system that you can use in minutes, and you can see a path through to production. That's that's what success looks like for this project. And, and that does mean there's a lot of, you know, there is extra engineering that we're doing to decouple the, 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 the latest generation of the Firefly brain from um, the types of services that you would use if, if, if you were, you know, you're deploying to the Kaleido, then, you know, we've got the off-chain messaging buff, we've got the, we've, we've got the you know, we've got the peer-to-peer the, the -peer messaging system, and we've particularly chosen IPFS there. We've, we've got all the three blockchains, they're all, they're all there, right? And obviously, being able to deploy Firefly apps against Kaleido is something that we really care about making a brilliant experience. But um, the open source project is not, an open source project in, in our minds, unless it is, it is self-sufficient and pluggable. So, um, so there's actually um, four, four repos um, that are sort of constitute the, the um, you know, the, 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 the initial contribution, but there are likely over the couple, couple, coming couple of weeks, even a couple more repos that will come as well. Um, and that's Firefly, which is the Firefly core. Um, and um, I don't know if it's maybe useful for me just to share my screen briefly as I'm talking about this. So you can see what you will be able to see. Um, hopefully you can see my screen yes, now. Thanks. So, so this, is the, this is the Firefly core repo. Um, and you'll see it talks, um, it talks about that there's actually two generations of the technology inside of here. There's the, the current generation, which is a Go code base, um, a uh, built for community pluggable code base. Um, uh, that has also, um, along the journey, um, picked up a lot of... Um, you know, improvements um, that are from feedback from developers who've been writing projects um, on this over, um, over a long period of time. So that's the current generation. Um, and then inside of here as well, we've also, we're also sharing the complete code, which is being used in a, in a number of production projects um, of the more coupled to Collido original version, which happened to be TypeScript um, uh, for that original, original version. So that, that, all of that is there as well as, as a reference, as a, as a starting point. So we really are sort of bringing that history with the, with the project to be able to help people understand the evolution. Um, and, and then the project itself for the, the current generation in, in, in Go, this, this is a sort of view of the, of the sophistication and the component layout. Um, so, um, you know, an API server and everything you'd expect with OpenID um, generation and um, WebSockets interface for, um, for applications to have an event connection as well as an API. Um, and then a whole bunch of internal components, which are the heavy lifting of the engine, um, including batch performance um, optimization that we've, we've, we've worked a lot on over, over time. Um, core concepts like broadcasting or, or, or sending, um, data management, privacy management, the sophistication, the really hard bit, the plumbing of the aggregation that's needed when everything arrives at different times and it needs to be brought together, managing subscriptions and, and dispatch as well as the, um, as the registry um, that's, that's deployed. Right? That's the core, the core sort of engine. But, but they, that doesn't include any actual, you know, persistence or infrastructure. Those pieces are all pluggable. So the code is pluggable sort of for in its DNA, it's pluggable. So the blockchain, um, none of that code above knows about a particular blockchain. All of that is, 
is pluggable. There's even a, a, a fake blockchain thrown in um, to help with, with unit testing. And although the local developer experience does use um, does use Ethereum by, de by default. Um, a P2P file system, we, we, we built on IPFS, but that again is made pluggable. So you want to put in Swarm or et cetera, then, then you, just, you can just plug that in. Data exchange, the off change the off-chain transfer of data. Well, Collider has got a lot of sophistication there, but we, and this is still work in progress, where um, we'll, we, we, are, we have a um, completely self-sufficient way of building a decentralized network that allows the data exchange to work. And like most of the existing sort of um, projects in this space, whether it's um, the uh, the the um, uh, Tesla evolution um, that's part of the the Besu um, project or, or etc. But actually, all of these the all of these instances can just talk directly to each other. But that's just a pluggable implementation. Um, and then even the core database itself is pluggable. So um, both SQL, but it's extensible beyond SQL as well. So um, for either for performance reasons or um, which query, query reasons, you could even plug in additional databases. And then the core code base as well is, is designed with enterprise in mind. So things like standard utility frameworks for REST and WebSockets, translation, um, a, a very carefully thought through logging framework um, and, and a pluggable configuration framework, all the sort of stuff you'd expect from a proper, proper open source project, particularly one that's thinking about an enterprise landscape. And then in addition to that, you've then got a CLI project, which is like a super simple in it, start, stop, show me my logs um, under the covers using Docker Compose, um, but doing file system management and all the stuff you'd expect, just like snap, I've got my own Firefly network up and running and I'm developing against it and exploring the API. Having that true in a very small number of minutes rather than having to go and make a whole bunch of choices before you can get going with it. The, the UI, um, which you saw the, the screenshots of, um, that's, that's under really active development at the moment. And then another piece um, of, I guess about 25,000 lines of, um, of, of Go code that's evolved throughout Kaleido's journey um, it is sort of under this umbrella. Um, and there's, this is uh, um, one of, of, of three, three of these such plugins, which is a, a blockchain plugin. So this, this project started well, um, very, very early on in, in, in Kaleido's history, um, I guess two and a half years ago um, now, which was building REST APIs and the, and, the, and the streaming of transactions onto the blockchain and the detection of events off of the blockchain. So, so that, that project is sort of separate, pluggable component, but also necessary to be able to have something like Firefly plug, plug in. So that's sort of remote agent or connector. Um, and that's, um, we have, we have the, the, the core to one, um, although the, the open sourcing of that will just won't be today um, for, for, for the team. Um, and um, Jim, Jim Zhang, who I'm sure a number of you um, know uh, from previous lives, um, is leading um, the, uh, the the completion um, of the of the fabric um, plugin for this as well. So that's the sort of landscape of the of the tech um, that that will be there. And these four four re repos are the ones that you'd have access to as soon as we work out the right way to do that access um, uh, today. All right, thank you, Peter. I mean, yeah, people are eager. You know, at the end of the day. <laughs> Most of us are developers and we want to see the code. So even though we don't have time to go very deep into the details here, uh, it'd be good to give people access. Uh, are there any questions otherwise from the TSC members specifically, but anyone for that matter? I saw Dano raise some concerns with regard to the timeline. Obviously we can't commit. I understand the appeal, right? From the Collido team to want to grab the opportunity of uh, the global forum uh, as a way to advertise this project. But I mean, we're not bound to this. I think it'd be good to do if we can, um, but we'll take the time it takes. But um, are there any other questions from the TSC members? Uh, yeah, Troy here. Um, one question that I have is, is there out of the box blockchain functionality that you're putting in? Um, from the sounds of it, it sounds like one of the main uses of the blockchain in this proposal is 
effectively event ordering and pinning off off chain objects to that ordering. Um, it, it is your thought that is primarily out of the box chain code um, like in fabric terms, or how do you deal with somebody adding like custom blockchain logic across different um, um, blockchains? So I'm just trying to see, do you, do you mostly see this as a um, pre-built um, objects that you yourself put onto the chain in terms of code, or do you really think there's pluggability? I guess um, I'll, I'll start, and I'm sure Jim will, will contribute here as well. Um, the, the reality is that blockchain, the blockchain space um, can't go as fast as it needs to if the only people who can develop against it are those that are willing to invest in becoming that um, deep specialist in writing the on-chain contracts. So um, we do think, um, you know, that the, the philosophy of, 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 the, of the Farfly project is that you can be a web developer, you can be a business API developer, you can live in TypeScript or beautiful mobile APIs, um, and this project's for you. Um, and there's no barrier to getting started. Um, and that, that means that yes, having pluggable, um, the, the patterns of blockchain becoming pluggable. And we, 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 we have had to sort of start one new, one that didn't seem to be standardized around, around um, sequencing and ordering and multi-party business processes. Um, but, but we're also expecting to be able to encapsulate everything that's already been done by communities like Tried by Fire, Ethereum, ERC 20s and 721s can, can be in that bucket of pre-existing um, on-chain logic as well. That said, if there isn't the escape valve to be able to use your own on-chain logic, if there isn't the, you know, the stored procedures um, of, of, of databases, then, then the project also hasn't, hasn't met its goals from, from our perspective. So it's, it's a mix of the two, but we really do hope that blockchain can get that, that massive adoption boost that will come when it's possible to, to derive serious business value without needing to you know, write, write contracts from scratch. All right, I see Brian on the queue to speak. <laughs> Maybe just to ask it a, a different way, uh, what I think what I think Troy was asking, and I and I'm curious about as well, uh, is the in, intent of Firefly to abstract you entirely away from what's going on at the ledger layer, you know, to to not be able to um, not only not have to write chain code directly, but to not be able to, or is it possible to bring pre-existing smart contract logic, pre-existing you know networks that have been launched perhaps uh, purely on Fabric or purely on uh, uh, Bezu or 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 quorum or whatever support you've got. Um, is, it, is it possible to, to, to migrate to something like this or is it really presume that you're living within Firefly soup to nuts for the development of the network? It's very much the latter, Brian. Um, I don't know, Jim, Jim, do you want to talk a bit more about that mix? Yeah, sure, sure. I think, I think uh, this is going to need uh, quite a bit more discussions to, to properly go through uh, what this looks like compared to my Chinko base or smart contract based solution. Uh, fundamentally, at the very uh, basic level of Firefly, we care about two things that are critical to multi-party systems that are fulfilled with blockchain. One is data immutability, the other is global ordering. Uh, and we will provide the corresponding uh, on-chain logic to make those uh, true. Uh, so chain code and smart contracts and core, dev, core devs will be contributed as part of the code base. Uh, but then if your logic uh, requires more on-chain, more sophisticated on-chain uh, logic than, than ordering and, and hashing, then you can definitely contribute your own. Uh, and as long as you still uh, is compliant to the interface that uh, Firefly requires for the on-chain logic, still preparing those two fundamental capabilities, then the, the rest of the, the extensions uh, is you're free to, to add for your applications. Yeah, right, I, I guess I would just add one more thing, sort of zooming back out even a little bit further. You know, every business application has custom business logic, right? But almost by definition, right? A, a you know, 
that's what makes it unique. It has unique business logic. And so a, a core part of, of Firefly is the idea that that business logic can live in different places. It, it may be part of your you know, web app, your, your, your Node.js app, right? Some, some business logic is there. Some business logic goes on chain. Some you know, may go in an Avalon trusted execution environment, right? Some, some may be ZKP based going forward. And so the idea, and some may be low code, no code, you know, sort of tools. I think Firefly embraces, you know, custom business logic in, in different places. Um, some of the core operations though, and, and how, you know, off chain and, and on chain, we're talking about messages, events, documents, um, you know, things like that, how the, like the, the connectivity, the sequencing, how, how those things are reliably delivered back to the application and from party to party across a network. Um, that sort of GORP and that plumbing is, is really where Firefly intends to step in. And some of, some of that simplification means there are, as, as Peter and Jim were saying, some, you know, base, um, base contracts right, that, that sort of come in the box, but that's certainly not our, like a, a design principle to say that's it, right, like that's all there is. It's just, it's more of a, a, a me too, like an add-on, right, that they're there to, to handle some, some really operations that, that we feel like should be more standard over time. And then absolutely, we understand real world applications have custom business logic in many places. All right, thank you. We're running out of time, but uh, let's go back to Troy. Yeah, I was just going to post a quick comment to the document. I was curious if there's also any design concepts around decentralized identifiers in Firefly. Uh, yeah, uh, at the moment, uh, the um, the identities that are used involved in the um, multi-party system are only verifiable uh, within the consortium. That's what you get uh, with Firefly, the, the, the current contribution. But as Peter was saying repeatedly, this is a pluggable system. So identity itself is pluggable. So if you want to you know, plug in a globally uh, verifiable DID system, then that's absolutely possible. All right, thank you guys. <clears throat> well, I mean, this, this is only the beginning of this discussion, obviously. I hope this uh, presentation and uh, Q&A session has helped people at least, you know, get uh, the beginning of some under better understanding of what this uh, project uh, is about. Um, I, you know, I invite people to continue the discussion. There are mainly two channels available. The first one is on the proposal itself, uh, as some, you know, as it was pointed out earlier, some people have commented on the proposal using the Google Doc uh, comment feature. That's definitely something that can be, that can continue. We also have the TSC mailing list that can be used if people want to post there. I think it's fine as well. And uh, I invite the Polido team to subscribe to the TSC list and be on the lookout for questions and answer. And uh, we will continue the discussion. We'll see where, you know, that leaves us within a week, uh, maybe two weeks, see if we can make a decision or if people feel like they need more time, we'll play by ear. Okay. Excellent. Well, thank you all. As, as we started this up, maybe you'll end it and say thank you all again for, um, curiosity for the questions and we look forward to continue the discussion. Uh, I mean, we also just make ourselves available if you want 30 minutes, you know, one-on-one -on -one to, to go deep or anything like that. Uh, you know, we're, we're, we're available. All right. Well, thank you guys. And uh, for the rest of the TSC, just quickly before I close the call, I wanted to highlight the issue that I put on the agenda at the end, knowing that we might not have time to get into it. And I don't actually expect us to have a full discussion on this now. I just wanted to raise, you know, uh, um, people's awareness. 
the situation we have right now with regard to the implementation of a decision to have a common repository and specifically, you know, using the Ripple Linter uh, tool is kind of bogus in the sense that if you look at the resolution, it actually directs people to copy the Ripple Lint JSON file into each repo, which we've agreed is the wrong thing to do because it's going to be a madness nightmare. There are some challenges in using a common configuration for everybody. So in recognition of that, I think we can find some kind of middle ground, but I do think we need to fix the record because as it stands, it's, we, are, we are asking people to do the wrong thing. So uh, we will leave it at this for today, but uh, I, I do want us to you know, get to that and fix it. So uh, with that, I think we can close the call with actually one minute to spare. Anybody else, anything before we close? Just, just a quick follow-up from us on, on the best way to get folks access into the Firefly repo. Do does anyone have advice on that? Open the repo. Okay. The, that would be the, a straightforward way to do it. Yeah. Uh, if that's not tractable for some reason, um, you there is a list of the TSC member GitHub IDs on the TSC page. So you could also invite them. Um, and I would ask that you invite me as well. Got it. Thank you, guys. I would like it to be public, a private access. A private access really doesn't do anything for me, even if it's to me. Um, if you need to keep commit history to keep customer data out, maybe you should do a squash commit and make those repos public. Did you hear that, Steve? Yep, and I'm counting on the fact that that makes more sense to Jim and Peter <laughs> and others on the call. <laughs> All right. Yeah, there's there's sure no problem that. with the history. Um, it was just just what the white white journey is. Um, I, I think was the question. So uh, we I think we've got the information we need. All right. Thank you again. Thanks everyone for joining, and uh, talk to you next week. Bye.